Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send a Twitch livestream audience to the preferred destination, providing that to pay the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with two Mars missions. This is a supply mission carrying food, water, and oxygen, and we also have a propellant supply mission that is carrying primarily hydrogen. And both are approaching Mars at the moment, and we're doing correction burns and then the capture burns with them. Most of this episode is going to be dedicated to uh, the return of Copper Spikes from Ceres. Copper Spikes went to Ceres, we decided to bring him back without resupplying him at Ceres first, and as a result, Copper Spikes is on a trajectory to Earth, but can't capture around Earth without help. So we'll be dealing with that, but first we have to get these two missions in order. And so... This is the propellant supply mission, you can tell by the little spherical tanks at the top. And it's got a nuclear engine plus ion engines. So this is going to take a long time to do its capture burn. And the other one, fortunately, is just mainly a nuclear engine. So that one is a little bit easier to deal with. So here, this is doing its ion engine burn on the way into Mars. And then at a certain point, we have to turn back to the food, water, and oxygen supply mission so it can do its capture burn with the nuclear engine, which is what it's doing right here. We are in the phase where we're planning to try to bring people back, and the propellant supply mission, I think, was supposed to refuel a return vessel that didn't have enough propellant to actually bring people back, but was docked to the Phobos station, so... So this will be trying to get over to the Phobos station in order to refuel that. Both missions are on Phobos tangent trajectories after they capture. So this is using both the ion and nuclear engine now to do the final bit of capture. And you can see, actually I think this one is headed to Deimos first. And then we'll bring the person at Deimos to the Phobos station. I think that was what was going on. It's been a bit. Anyway, so here we are trying to figure out how to rescue Copper Spikes. So I've got the Ceres Spike, which is Copper Spikes' vehicle, which is coming in. And we're looking at that and trying to figure out what kind of stage is necessary to push it. I end up being woefully incorrect about all this, and we'll see that in a little bit. But I come up with the stage. It is a hydrolock stage, very simple. Uh, about a 600 kilonewton engine pushing it and we launch it on a Kasei rocket with four Sajita boosters. So here goes the launch. Throttle up, and ignition. And off it goes. So again, methane oxygen boosters, hydrogen oxygen core, uh, sort of uh, modified Ares 5 sort of core. very capable rocket. Off go the boosters, but not quite capable enough as it turns out in the end. So that's the end of the core, and we've got an upper stage, which is a single vacuum variant of the core engines, and that gets us to orbit with some despair in order to match speeds. But to match speeds with the series spike, it's coming in on not just, you know, an escape trajectory, but a very high velocity escape tra trajectory. It needs 5,442 meters per second to capture, which means beyond low Earth orbit, we need to burn about 8,500 in order to get to it. And then after we get to, to it, we have to have enough fuel to capture it into orbit, which means with it as the load, we need 5,000 meters per second after we do the 8,000. So I realized that we don't have enough <laughs> and and so I send up it's actually a little hydrazine package we're trying to send hydrazine to it because the series spike has the candle RTGs they're little candle engines that are, pass hydrazine through to generate thrust the the hydrazine passes through an RTG in order to generate thrust very low thrust but about 500 seconds of ISP so that's pretty good not on the level of a nuclear engine but better than a lot of other engines so we're eventually going to send that hydrazine package to the series spike but it's not the right time we're not lined up right we only get one opportunity per day for that and so we're dealing with this hydrolock stage which will try to push the series spike into orbit I mean it has a healthy amount of delta V it's just um, well, it's not going to be enough. 
So I think what happened was in the VAB, I thought about escape trajectory or either I thought about the 3000 meters per second difference between low earth orbit and escape, or I thought about the 5000 meters per second that it needed uh, to capture, but I didn't think about both together. Something like that happened. Anyway, here's the launch of the hydrazine package. Uh, so we will need both of these things to rendezvous with the series spike in order for it to work. Neither on their own is going to be enough in order to capture it into orbit. So that is the end of the core there and once again the upper stage. And perhaps not such a great idea, I decided to go with a hypergolic pair of engines for this, for the hydrazine package, their MMH and Mon3. I don't know why I did that. Um, I guess they're nice and dense, but it would have been better to have the hydrazine on like a nuclear stage or something. Anyway, the series spike continues to approach, and I switched to its hydrazine engines, the candle engines, the little RTGs that uh, produce about 500 seconds of ISP, and used that delta V. However, that changes its orbit a bit which means that the burns that we had done with the other missions aren't quite right anymore, especially the burns that we did with the Hydrolock stage. And so we need to do a big correction with the Hydrolock stage to adjust for the fact that the Series Spike just did another burn with its engines and that had thrown the timing off. And that was not good. And this is a burn with the little Hydrazine package, the Series Spike Rescue number 2. Series Spike Rescue number one is this one, which is the Hydrolock stage, and then number two is the Hydrazine package. So here we are trying to match speeds with the target. You can see an enormous amount of velocity, 4,000 meters per second there, and here still 1,000 meters per second with less than 3,000 meters per second of delta V to spare. I had to cut it because our closest approach distance was getting further away, but our altitude is going up. We're going past periapsis here. And the Hydrolock stage has to rendezvous first in order to pull the series spike a little bit further down so that this can rendezvous with it because this doesn't have enough delta V to actually rendezvous with it at full speed. So the, the Hydrolock stage, this one, has to do it first and the whole thing just isn't feasible logistically. So I ultimately decide that I can't do it this way and so we revert. <laughs> we actually uh, load up an earlier save just as the series spike is coming into the system and try something completely different, which is a nuclear stage. This is the Fuji uh, nuclear stage. It is a custom stage I had made. And we have a nuclear engine on the tail. And this time we are launching with a Kasei Super Heavy. So that's the Kasei rocket with four Kasei boosters instead of the little Sajita boosters, so all Hydrolocks, um, lots of engines, 25. I think we only light 20 of them on the surface. And then this also gets another chance to bring itself in, and we handle that a little bit differently. So I also try to dump some of the supplies, like and just the waste and wastewater, which are just useless mass. So we try to lighten up as much as possible to get as much delta V as we can. And ultimately, it only needs 4,000 meters per second to capture, you can see there, only, right? Uh, which means that this is going to still need to burn more than 7,000 meters per second in order to catch up to it, and then pull it down by another chunk. <laughs> so, but it is a huge nuclear stage, so there is that benefit. The rocket is more than 5,000 tons on the pad, and it's all hydrolocks, so its payload capacity is enormous, especially considering we are certainly not planning to reuse any part of it. If this didn't work, we'd have to use the Daenerys Aerospike SSTO or something like that. Uh, probably we wouldn't need the Monument rocket, but we'd probably need the Daenerys at least. Off go the boosters. And off goes the core. And then finally we do make orbit. And the core still has plenty of Delta V to spare. And we will be using that to do much of the initial burns. The Fuji has radiators that double as sort of the 
interstage fairings. They're not what you mount with, they're just sort of covering it aerodynamically. But here we are doing one of the rendezvous burns, and then more rendezvous burns. But this time hopefully we'll get it done with just this piece. Trying to use two different pieces in order to try to rescue the series spike wasn't such a good idea. Alright, so that stage is done and now the Fuji has to do the rest. As you can see, more than 12,000 meters per second in it. And it's fairly heavy actually compared to the target. So that 12,000 meters per second is a serious amount. You'll see the relative sizes between the two as we approach. We do have OMS engines on this and I was using some of that. They are Hydrolox OMS engines and we would like to just burn off some of that oxygen as we probably won't need it. And it'll be more efficient for the nuclear engine to just have its hydrogen going. The reason we have hydrogen containment, you can see the hydrogen gas in addition to the liquid hydrogen is because that way we can cool that hydrogen to ensure that there's zero boil off. Well, there's boil off, but we're containing the boil off and we can cool it back down into liquid hydrogen in order to produce the fuel again. So here we're finally rendezvousing after all that effort. But note that we are past periapsis. Our altitude is going up. So this is not good. We would like to, you know, meet up before periapsis and then capture at periapsis, but that's not happening. So it's inefficient compared to what I was expecting. And yeah, I plot the capture burn and we need to make sure that we do the radial component to make sure we're not hitting into the surface there. So that costs extra because we don't want to do the burn and have the series spike and copper spikes ending up on a suborbital trajectory and doomed. But yeah, we discovered having plotted that burn that we need more delta V. And so I dump a few things. I dump some of the xenon gas. We won't be able to use the ion engines quickly enough anyway, so we don't really need the xenon gas at all. They can't capture us quickly enough. And then dump the food, water, and oxygen. Actually, the first time I dumped the food, water, and oxygen, I dumped too much water. So we had to reload a save to make sure that we had enough water. And then we go to the part where Copper Spikes has to dismantle things. So we actually get rid of those candle engines, the little uh, RTGs. Hopefully those were just tossed into space and... Uh, copper spikes didn't have to go in and do any nuclear things and we also get rid of the radiators which hopefully we shut down the little nuclear reactor at the bottom first the one that powers the ion engines i think we probably did so anyway copper spikes gets back into his seat and now we have enough delta v barely though we could have probably dismantled a few extra things like some of those tanks on the tail all right, so capturing way, way past periapsis, 22,000 kilometers. But it ends up being enough, finally. So there we go. You can see the apoapsis. It'll eventually turn into a proper apoapsis instead of a negative number. And we want that below the moon's orbit, so below 300,000 kilometers. And we can see that coming up here. But we're at a different, different inclination anyway, so it's not like the moon would interfere. And we did leave plenty of food, water, and oxygen on board. So we'll have to send something up here to grab copper spikes, but that was done in a later live stream. For now, we left copper spikes in orbit of Earth and safe finally. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.